So we're in the process of understanding how automorphisms can help us to characterize the number, the nature, and the relationship between the roots of a polynomial. We saw in the last video that automorphisms of E over F always send roots of polynomials over F to other roots of that polynomial over F. In other words, automorphisms send roots to roots. So automorphisms are really like the notion of conjugate that we had in the complex numbers. Then the complex numbers, the roots of any polynomial with real coefficients, come in a conjugate pair every time because complex conjugation is an automorphism of C over R. And in the more general setting, automorphisms of E over F take the place of conjugation. So automorphisms are what relate the roots of our polynomial to one another. In this video, we want to ask the question, how many automorphisms will one of those extended fields have? For example, the complex numbers over the real numbers only have two automorphisms, one in which we do nothing at all, and the other, which exchanges i for minus i, the complex conjugate. But in a more complicated situation, how many automorphisms do we have? We counted explicitly in the example where we extend the rationals by the square root of 2 and the square root of 5, that there are a total of four different automorphisms of that extended field over q. There's one that interchanges the square root of 2 portions, there's one which interchanges the square root of five portions, and then there's one that manages to do both. And then, of course, there's the identity that does nothing. But in general, how many automorphisms do we have, and therefore how many different conjugates could we potentially have for a root of a polynomial over f? We'll see in this video that it makes a difference whether that extension is a normal extension or not. Ultimately, we care most about splitting fields, and every splitting field will be a normal extension. But in more generality, we're going to see in this video how a normal extension of degree n will always give us n independent automorphisms. So we're going to do that in two steps. First of all, we're going to look at that statement itself, that e is a normal extension of f. If e is a finite algebraic extension of degree n, then e is normal extension of f if and only if there are exactly n distinct automorphisms of e over f. So in other words, if e is a normal extension of f, a finite normal extension of degree n, then that means that all n of the minimal polynomial's roots are in e. Therefore, we have access to all n of them to play around with with automorphisms. But then the second statement says that there are exactly n automorphisms that permute those roots one with another. That seems actually like a small amount. Because given that I have n different roots, I could potentially have n factorial different permutations of them. But this is the claim that we don't actually end up with that many, that we actually end up with only n when e is a normal extension of f. So we're going to illustrate this by looking at several different examples. And each of these examples is going to have one thing in common. So q adjoined with i and radical 2, q adjoined with the fifth root of unity, and q adjoined with the fourth root of 2. Each of these are quartic extensions of the rationals. They're degree 4 extensions of q. But well, we're going to see how the story of counting the automorphisms of these fields are different depending on whether our extension is normal or not. So first of all, q adjoined with i and radical 2. We've seen in a previous video how there are a total of four automorphisms of this field over q. There's the identity. There's a, which trades out i with minus i. There's b, which trades out root 2 with minus root 2. And then there's the composition of those two that trades out i with minus i and root 2 with minus root 2. So that gives us a total of four. And that happens to agree with the degree of this extension precisely because this is a normal extension of q. One of the ways we can see that it's a normal extension of q is just to observe that it happens to be the splitting field of the polynomial t to the fourth plus 1 that has rational coefficients. Therefore, this is normal by our normal extension theorem. How about the fifth cyclotomic field? This is the field that we get by extending the rationals by the primitive fifth root of unity, e to the 2 pi i over 5. So we can see that there's a basis over q of this uh, extended field that it consists of the powers of zeta 5. So let's take zeta 5, zeta 5 squared, cubed into the fourth as our basis for this degree 4 extension. What are the automorphisms? Well, when we talked about the cyclotomic fields in a previous video, we saw that the automorphisms were precisely those that sent this primitive root to each of its powers. So sending it to its own square permutes the various roots of fifth roots of unity in this fashion. Sending it to the cube permutes them in a different fashion. And sending zeta to the fourth power of zeta 
permutes those roots in yet another fashion. But each one of those is an independent automorphism over Q. And together with the identity, this covers all possibilities. Because after all, according to the uh, conjugate roots theorem, zeta 5 has to be sent to another root, potentially the same, but potentially another root, of its minimal polynomial. And its minimal polynomial has degree 4. There are four distinct roots of it, and we've now covered the possibility for all four of the different places that we could send zeta. Therefore, this is a complete list of the automorphisms of the fifth cyclotomic field over Q. We showed in a previous video that that makes the automorphism group isomorphic to the cyclic group of four elements. But we can also say that this is a normal extension over Q because it happens to be the splitting field of that fourth cyclotomic polynomial. So that makes it a normal extension. And therefore, the degree of the extension, 4, agrees with the number of automorphisms, also 4. So now let's look at this last example, adjoining the real fourth root of 2 to the rationals. Again, this is a degree 4 extension because we get as a basis, for example, 1, the fourth root of 2, the square root of 2, and the fourth root of 8, or 2 to the 3 fourths, if you like. What are the automorphisms of this field over Q? Well, we always have the identity. And then beyond that, we also need to know where else can we send 2 to the 1 fourth. After all, that number by itself generates the other basis elements over Q. So as soon as we decide where to send the fourth root of 2, we've determined an automorphism over Q. Well, because of the conjugate roots theorem, we have to send 2 to the 1 fourth to another root of its minimal polynomial, namely t to the fourth minus 2. And so the only other option we have is to send it to its own opposite, because minus 2 to the 1 fourth is also a root of t to the fourth minus 2. And it happens to be the only other root uh, inside of our extended field. And notice that when we send 2 to the 1 fourth to its opposite, we're also sending 2 to the 3 fourths to its opposite, uh, just because 2 to the 1 fourth times 2 to the 1 half is equal to 2 to the 3 fourths. And we can show just by virtue of a being an automorphism uh, that that must flip the sign on the uh, fourth root of 8 as well. But I can't send 2 to the 1 fourth anywhere else. And again, the reminder is because of the conjugate roots theorem, we have to send 2 to the 1 fourth to another root of t to the fourth minus 2 inside of our extended field. But our extended field is a subfield of the real numbers, and there are only two real fourth roots of 2, namely plus and minus 2 to the 1 fourth. So now that I've covered both possibilities, 2 to the 1 fourth goes to itself, that gives us the identity, and 2 to the fourth goes to its opposite, that gives us a, there are no other possibilities. Again, because the fate of 2 to the 1 fourth completely determines phi because it generates the rest of the basis of this extended field over Q. Therefore, there are in fact only two automorphisms of this field over Q and not four as we were hoping for. So T to the fourth minus 2 doesn't split in Q adjoining the fourth root of 2. It only factors partially. It factors into uh, two, uh, T minus 2 to the 1 fourth, T plus 2 to the 1 fourth, and then there's a quadratic irreducible factor that we can't account for. That makes this not a normal extension, and that leads to the fact that there are not a total of four automorphisms of this field over Q. So the fact that we are missing some automorphisms here is an artifact of the non-normality of this extension because we don't have all four of the roots of that polynomial to play with. The second awesome fact about finite normal extensions is that we can also characterize the normality of an extension by the fixed field of the Galois group. What do I mean by that? Well, the statement is that if I have a normal extension, E over F, then the only elements of E which are fixed by every element of this Galois group, in other words, every automorphism fixes, the only elements of E that are fixed by everything belonged to the base field in the first place. So in these examples, we have a bunch of automorphisms that we determined on the previous slide. And we want to ask the question now, which elements of this extended field remain fixed by every automorphism in the group of automorphisms of E over F? In other words, which are going to survive if we apply every automorphism to them? Which are going to remain in place, necessarily? So let's consider the first example, Q adjoined with I and the square root of 2. I want to ask the question, what elements of that extended field remain fixed by everything? So we're going to go one element at a time. First thinking about the transposition of i with minus i. The elements of this extended field here that are going to remain fixed are exactly those that don't have an i, and therefore don't have an i radical 2 in their expansion over q. But they can have a square root of 2, because nothing is happening to that square root of 2 term. So Q adjoined with the square root of 2 is going to be a description of all the elements that remain fixed by the automorphism A. 
Likewise, the automorphism b, which trades the sign on the square root of 2, is going to fix everything that doesn't have a square root of 2 in it. So that's going to fix q adjoin i. Likewise, if I flip the signs on both i and the square root of 2, then anything which does not have an i or a square root of 2 in it, but it could have an i square root of 2 in it, will remain fixed. Because after all, if I flip the sign on both i and radical 2, then the sign on i radical 2 is going to flip twice, i.e. not flip at all. Another way to see that is by thinking of what a generic element of this extended field looks like. It looks like a linear combination of 1, i, radical 2, and i, radical 2. And if I want an element which remains fixed by everything in this group of automorphisms, then I have to observe that a is going to flip the sign on this term. And so if that term is non-zero, then this element is not going to remain fixed. It's not going to remain the same as what it was. So we have to insist that b be equal to 0 in order for our element to be fixed by a. Likewise, in order for an element to be fixed by b, this term here that has a square root of 2 in it, which is going to change sign under b, must also have a 0 coefficient. And finally, the term with an i radical 2 in it is going to flip signs under the automorphism c. Therefore, the only thing that survives is going to be something that didn't have a b term, a c term, or a d term at all. In other words, the only things that survive are going to be the numbers which were rational in the first place. So the fixed field of the entire Galois group here consists of just the base field q. The same story is going to be true in our fifth cyclotomic field as well, although it's a little bit more subtle to see why. If we take a look at the element a here, which sends zeta to zeta squared, that's going to invoke a permutation of the entire basis, zeta, zeta squared, zeta cubed, and zeta to the fourth, as shown. So it's going to send a generic element that has the form a zeta plus b zeta squared plus z, c zeta to the third plus d zeta to the fourth into c times zeta plus a times zeta squared plus d times zeta to the third plus b times zeta to the fourth. And in order for that element to remain fixed, we have to set those coefficients equal to one another because they form a basis. So we have to have a equal to c, b equal to a, c equal to d, and d equal to b. But solve that linear system of equations, and you find out that it just insists that a, b, c, and d all be equal to one another. So those elements that remain fixed under the automorphism a of the cyclotomic field over q are going to be those for which all their coefficients are the same as one another. So those are the elements that have the form a times zeta plus zeta squared plus zeta to the third plus zeta to the fourth. But what kinds of elements are those really? Recall that zeta to the fifth has a minimal polynomial of 1 plus t plus t squared plus t cubed plus t to the fourth. That's the cyclotomic polynomial, the fifth cyclotomic polynomial. Therefore, zeta to the fifth is a root of that equation. And therefore, 1 plus t plus t plus t, plus t squared plus t cubed plus t to the fourth has to equal 0. And so the expression that we have down here must be equal to negative 1. Therefore, the only elements that are guaranteed to remain fixed under even the automorphism a are going to be those elements that are just equal to a rational number. And that automatically makes it so that the fixed field of the entire Galois group here has to consist only of the rational numbers. So only q remains fixed by a. And therefore, if we're going to insist that it also be fixed by b and c, we can't get anything larger than q itself. So only q is fixed by every automorphism in this Galois group. So just the base field, everything which doesn't belong to the base field gets moved by some automorphism in this group. OK, so what about this last example? In this last example, we only had two automorphisms, the identity and then the automorphism which switched 2 to the 1 fourth with negative 2 to the 1 fourth. And that automorphism has as a fixed field q adjoins square root of 2. After all, if I'm flipping the sign on the fourth root of 2, then the sign on the square root of 2 is going to flip twice. In other words, it's not going to flip at all. The sign on 2 to the 3 fourths will flip three times, and therefore it will flip. But importantly, the sign on the square root of 2 is not going to flip under this automorphism. Therefore, any generic element in my field, which looks like this, the automorphism a is going to flip the sign on that second term, and it's going to flip the sign on the fourth term. And so if this element remains fixed, the coefficients on that second and fourth term have to be 0. But there is no automorphism in this group that is capable of flipping the sign on the square root of 2. That square root of 2 never flips. And therefore, the fixed field of this Galois group is not just q. It's q adjoin radical 2 that survives every automorphism this time. So there's some bigger field intermediate between q and q adjoined with 2 to the 1 fourth that is fixed under the entire Galois group. And that's very different than the behavior we see on the left here. Why? Because according to this normal automorphism theorem, the two extensions on the left were normal. And therefore, we have enough automorphisms 
that everything except what's in Q is moved by at least one of them. But our example on the right was not a normal extension. Therefore, we didn't have enough automorphisms to ensure that everything that's not rational gets moved because we have Q adjoined radical 2, which has some elements in it that are not rational, that nevertheless remain fixed by every automorphism in this group. So we're going to return to these facts a lot, because this gives us a very strong characterization of just how many automorphisms an extended field has when that extension is normal.